Hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to User One Productions, my name is David, and in today's quick Unity tutorial, we're going to be looking at doors once again. I'm going to be calling this the advanced door system because it adds more features to our previous door and it fixes a lot of the bugs that we've encountered. As always my friends, if you come to like this video, please want to drop a like, if you're new, subscribe and click that notification bell. And as usual, everything you can find in this tutorial series, scripts, models, sound effects, it's all linked in a Google Drive in the description. Also linked in the description is our Discord server, so if you have any questions, concerns, or you just want to show off your work, go ahead and hop in there. We have a lot of people that will be able to help. And without further ado, let me show you the finished product, and then I'm going to show you how I actually made this. Also, before we go into the tutorial, you guys, uh, I do apologize for the lack of videos lately. I have just started a new job Monday through Friday, about 8 to 10 hours a day, so that is why the lack of videos is here right now. But I'm going to be making a lot more on the weekends, and... I'll be scheduling them throughout the week. Okay, moving on. We have this brand new door model right here, which will be in the description for a download. It says E to open door. We get a little lock sound effect and it says the door is locked, okay? This little box down here is what's locking it. You can obviously change this to like a actual lock, but just for testing purposes, it's a cube. Now there's two ways in opening this door, okay? You can actually go around the map and find the key and then walk up to it. It unlocks with a little unlock sound effect, and then you can open the door, you can walk in, and you can close door, okay? And it's got sound effects for each different uh, animation. With our old doors, you used to just walk up to it, and then it would say open slash close, but now the text is actually working, so it's when it's open, it says closed, and when it's closed, it says open. Pretty cool. Also, something else that you can actually do with this uh, new door is say you actually have like a lock right here and you don't have a key but you want your player to figure out how to get in you just pull out your gun shoot it off and now the door is unlocked very nice all right let's look at the advanced door script real quick so we can go over it as you can tell in comparison to the other door script this one is uh, a little bit longer let me scroll in a little bit and then let's get into it okay at the top here we have everything we could play around with we have a public animator for the door this because the way the door opens closes and the lock state it's all through animation we have a lock object, key object, open and close text, and then lock text as well. We have an audio source for everything we can do, which is the open, close, lock, and unlock sound effects. We have three private bools because these are not really anything you can play around with. This is just all controlled by code. So we have a bool for in reach, door is open, and door is closed. And then two public bools, which we're able to play around with in the editor for locked and unlocked. The reason we have these two bools is because if you want the door to be locked, you obviously turn locked on. And if it's just a normal door without a lock, you just say unlocked. And also, you guys, if you're not familiar with the reach tool, I highly suggest you go watch the first door tutorial because we do go over how to create that. And we're going to be reusing a lot of stuff from that video in this video. So if you haven't already, please go watch that video and then continue to this one. Okay, scrolling down, void on trigger enter. So this is saying if our reach tool touches whatever this script is attached to, and the door is closed, we want in reach to become true and open text to become true. Since the door is closed right now, we want the open text to pop up. We have a second if statement, and this one's the same thing, but saying uh, if the door is open. So if the door is open, we want the closed text to become active instead. Moving on down, void on trigger exit. So if our reach tool leaves the game object with this script attached, in reach becomes false, open text becomes false, lock text becomes false, and closed text becomes false. The reason we have all three of these is because at one point during the game, you are going to have one of these texts pop up and we want to make sure when we look away, they all become deactive. Okay. So in our start function, we want everything to be false, except the door is closed because we want that to be true because our door is going to be starting closed. So door open is false in reach is false. Open and close text is false. Now we have our void update, which is where most of our script is taking place. These few lines of code right here is the logic for the lock objects. This more or less says if the lock object is active in hierarchy, locked is true and unlocked is false. Then we have an else statement right underneath this if. So more or less this is saying else unlock true locked equals false, okay? When you put an else underneath an if like this, it's more or less saying the opposite of whatever's in this statement. So this statement is saying if the lock object is active in the hierarchy, while this else statement is saying locked object deactive in hierarchy, pretty much. Okay, now this next if statement is if we're in reach and we have a key in our inventory, 
and then we press down our interact button, which in my case is E. The unlock sound effect plays locked equals false, key object set active false, so this is going to take away that key from our inventory so we can't reuse it. And then we start a coroutine for unlock door. Let's scroll to the bottom and see what it is. We have I enumerator unlock door and then a yield return new wait four seconds 0 0.0f. So after this 0 0.05 seconds, it's going to be unlocked and the lock object is becoming false. The reason we do this is because if you notice when I played the game, when I went to go pick up this key, I pick it up and then I look at the door, it unlocks the object first and then I have to press again to open it. Without this IE numerator, it would get rid of the lock and open it right away, which I personally did not want. Let's scroll back up to the next statement, which is this if statement right here. So if we're in reach and the door is closed, it's unlocked, and then we press down E. So this is more or less just saying if the door is unlocked and it's closed. We set the door's animation bool to open, which is true. We turn the animation bool of closed to false. The open text becomes false because it's currently opening. We have a little sound effect play. Then we say door is open equals true and door is closed equals false. And we have an else if statement right here. So similar to how an else statement works, which is the complete opposite of the previous if, an else if is when the statement changes a little bit. So you're going to notice right here and here the statement changes a little bit. So else if we're in reach and the door is open and it's unlocked, and we press down E, which is our interact button, the door open animation bool becomes false, closed becomes true, the closed text becomes false, we have a little closed sound effect, and then the door is closed equals true, door is open equals false. So the only change between these two statements is we have if in reach and door is closed versus if in reach and door is open. That's why we use this else if statement. And then the final piece of the puzzle is if in reach and locked, and then we press down E, the open text becomes false, locked text becomes true, and then we have a lock sound effect. This is saying if the lock is still on the door. Okay, now if we go back in the Unity, we can actually start setting up this door. I'll show you exactly how I've done it. Okay, so all I've done is actually just copy and pasted this door and wall over here. So that way I can go through this whole tutorial with you guys real quick. So if I use the rotate tool and I click on this door, you're going to notice it does not rotate correctly. So what we need to do is actually go game object, create an empty, and I'm gonna call this uh, door hinge, okay? We're gonna go to the top view in orthographic, and then we're just gonna position it exactly where we want the door to rotate. So where the hinges are gonna go, which mine are gonna go, oh, a little too close, uh, right here on the right side, okay? So with that being right there, we wanna take this door, which is right here for me, and I'm going to click and drag it into door hinge. Okay, so now our place of origin is right here on the right side or left, depending where you put it. Now, if we use the rotate tool, it actually rotates like a door. Now we just need to make three simple animations, which I'll show you how we do. We go animation. If you don't have this window, you go window, animation, animation. Okay, so let's go onto door hinge. We need to add a component first, which is going to be animator. Inside your assets somewhere, right click, go create and create a new animator. I'm just going to call this tutorial door. I'll then go back to the door right here. And then the controller, we click and drag that tutorial door right here. Perfect. Also, we want to make sure apply root motion is ticked. Okay, cool. So now we need to create these animations. So create, I'm going to call it tutorial door. Uh, we're going to do idle first. Let's press the record button, add property right click on transform and it's going to add two uh, keys right here now that animation is finished okay we can stop recording click right here and go create new clip this one's going to be called open again add property same thing right click add properties record so we're going to leave this beginning key alone and instead we're going to go to the one second key and we're just going to rotate the door to our appropriate angle we want it to open at this could be any angle you want you can press play and see it actually open what i actually want to do first though is i want to copy these ones this is optional if you guys want to do this it's just me being a little picky i'm going to do Control c put it at the 20 second mark so that way the door is still closed right here the reason for that is because i want this handle to actually 
go down as if you're opening it. So I'm going to grab that cylinder right here, which is the handle. I'm going to hold control. I'm going to bring it down a little bit, and then I'm going to bring it back to the original position. So that way our key just got added right here for it. We're going to go in a little bit. I'm going to go to the 10 second mark. It's going to go down. And then at the 20 second mark, I want it to go back up. So now when our animation plays, the handle goes down and up and the door opens. Very nice. Next, what I'm going to do is the final keys at the bottom here where the doors actually open. We'll select those. Control C. Stop recording. Create a new clip. And we're going to call this closed. We will start recording once again. Add property. Transform. Add properties. And now we have the idle state again. If we go to the beginning keys right here and do control V, it's going to start in the open position and then it will close. Okay, perfect. All right, now we just need to put this all into play with the animator. So we will click the actual object with the animator attached. We will go animator and we're going to look inside here real quick. We have three uh, animations, which I'm just going to kind of orientate like this. We also need to make sure these are not looped. So find your animations in your assets. Make sure you tick off loop time on each one. All right, so now make sure you're not in layers, you're in parameters. We need to add a bool, capital O open, add another bool, capital C for closed. And then we need to right click on the idle animation, create transition to open. Click the little white line it created, which is our transition. We want to add a condition, which is open, true. Has exit time is ticked off. Go into the settings. Fixed duration is ticked off. Okay, and now that the door is open, it needs to be able to go to close. So we right click from open to closed. This is going to get a condition of closed true. And then from closed, we right click and make another transition to open. And this is going to be open true. And both those transitions we just created, we want to make sure it has exit time is off. Fixed duration is off. And that goes for the other one as well. Okay. Now that we have all that set up, let's actually add the script to the door itself, which is going to be advanced doors. So the very top tab is going to be an animator. So we need to just click and drag the animator into here. The lock object is going to be this cube right here for me. This is complete optional. You do not need to put a lock on the door. Key object is going to reference something in our inventory. So all I've done is inside my FPS controller, inside my inventory, I right click and create empty. And then I call it an advanced door key. That's going to be the object we put into our script if you're using a key for this. Then we have open, close, and lock text. Okay, so now in my first person controller, inside my HUD, inside my texts, I've added an open door, which I'll actually flash on the screen for you guys. If you guys can see that, it just says open door, and then I made a child of it, which is E, and I placed it in this sort of orientation. All you got to do to get that is just right click UI, and then I did text right there. You need to create three of those, one for open, one for closed, and then one for locked. And obviously my locked, it does not have the child because it's not an interactable object at that point. It just says it's locked. We will go into our script and plug each one of those in. Open, closed, and locked. Now we have an open, closed, and locked sound effect. Oh, and also an unlock sound effect. Pretty cool. All I've done here is in my first person controller, I have this tab called sounds and if I fly over to my character wherever he might be he's over here I can actually turn my gizmos on there we go that would have helped all you have to do in order to get a sound effect into the scene as an object you click and drag it just into the scene like this and now that sound effect is a part of the player when you do this you just want to make sure play on wake is ticked off and then even if it's the wrong sound effect you can go ahead and change it right up here what I usually do is I get one sound effect set up the way I want it to, and then I just start duplicating them and then changing the names and the sounds. So we have a door closed, door locked, door unlocked, and door open. We got to plug those into that script real quick. So we have open, close, locked, unlock. Perfect. And in my instance, this door is going to be locked, so I will tick locked on. The script should handle this automatically, but just in case, I like to do it myself. All right, cool. Something else I added to the lock was actually a target script, which we went over in my full gun system. If you guys haven't seen that tutorial, please go watch it. It's a good tutorial on how to get weapons and enemy health set up. 
So all we need to do here is just destroy game object and then we need to call back to the original game object which is the lock. Just like that. The health, I'm going to turn it down to like 10 because it is just a lock. Now if we play our game, everything should be working correctly. If it's not, we can assess the problem. So if I walk up to it, ah, yep, there is a problem. I forgot the number one thing I always tell you guys not to forget. So what we need to do is go into door hinge, add component, box collider. And then we need to make this to the about the size of the door. Actually, I'm going to scratch that idea. Like the old door, I used to look at the handle to open it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to scale this box accordingly to a pretty good size like this. And then I'm going to put it right over the handle. So that way the player actually needs to look at the handle in order to open the door. If you don't like this idea, then you can just make it the size of the door. So if you look anywhere on the door, it will work. Once you get that in the placement you want, which I have right here, we are going to do is trigger. And that's all we should have to do. And now it should be working. All right, let's walk over to it again. It doesn't work anywhere until I look at the handle. Open door. It's locked. Perfect. If I grab my gun, shoot the lock off. Open door. Nice. It opens. It closes and plays all the correct sound effects. We have a little glitch going on right here. So if we go into our animator, the transition from door open the door close, this one right here going down, right over here you can see where it overlays this little blue margin right here. We just need to make this margin super duper small, as small as it goes, and then the animation, we need to put it kind of even like this with that gray piece right here, okay? So now, if we play the game, once again we run over here, Try to open the door, it's still locked, shoot the lock off. E, opens, close, and now the door is closed, perfect. And now you might be wondering, well what happens if I want a key? Which all I have right here is set up a key object, it has a box collider, is trigger on, and then the pickup key script, which I'm not gonna go completely over in today's tutorial because I went over this in how to unlock a box tutorial. Uh, on the channel so like I said you guys if you're not caught up with the series I highly advise it because we keep going back to these other scripts to add on to our new systems all it is doing though is going to deactivate this key object on the ground activate the empty game object in our inventory it has a text saying pick up and a key sound to when you pick it up and then when you have that all set up press E on that key it goes away we have a little key jingle Let's make sure it unlocks nice and then we can open that door perfect all right that's gonna be about it for today's unity tutorial you guys thank you so much for the support we just broke 400 subscribers we are slowly closing that gap with 1000 and i am so excited for that as i said earlier my friends everything's linked in the description down below including my discord which if you're not in i highly advise you to join it's pretty cool in there and with that all being said guys this is user one productions signing off for now i'll catch you in the next one Y'all have a great day, and if you haven't already, please want to drop me a like, subscribe. This is User1 Productions, signing off for now. Peace.